do not forget this is more important now than it ever has been before in your crypto journey for this bull run what am i talking about let's look at some of the predictions made by four large institutions about six to eight months ago for how bitcoin and the overall crypto market will be performing like this year particularly were those predictions correct and ultimately i'm going to be answering the question that many people are asking down below and also on Twitter. I see a lot on Twitter, actually. Twitter's a shit show right now, which is, oh my God, I'm panicking. Is the market still alive? And a lot of these influencers, influencers are saying altcoins are dead. Altcoins are gone, okay? Now, admittedly, I'm friends with a lot of influencers and I will continue to be. Again, I'm definitely one myself, all right? So here's the thing. I like a lot of these guys, but a lot of them are spewing complete BS. Now, some of them have very valid things to say, but some are just trying to make clickable videos because you're panicking and they know it. They know it because the videos that are performing well right now are the videos that incentivize more fear. Not the videos saying how good the bull run's gonna be, playing into your emotions. And you watch this flip as the bull run continues and the market goes up. Now again, not saying, not throwing shade at anyone here particularly, make videos and whatever the hell you want to. But for those of you who are like, oh, I'm second guessing myself right now. I should sell crypto or maybe I should look to, you know, take some profits and leave. You can do that by, you know, your own means. But again, let's revisit some of these predictions and see what could possibly be on the horizon here. So first of all, one of the largest predictions that were made here was by a company called Alliance Bernstein. These guys have about a trillion dollars in assets under management. Now, these guys predicted Bitcoin would hit $80,000 in 2024. And guess what? We're almost there. Now, they weren't predicting the top of the market to be $80,000, just 2024, just Bitcoin for this cycle. Now, about an $80,000 Bitcoin should put the global market cap at about $3.5 trillion. Again, if you pretty much look at the market cap, Bitcoin would have to be, and considering Bitcoin remains about 50% dominance to the market at any given time, you can work out the market cap give or take a few hundred billion dollars. I know, it's about a rounding error, right? <laughs> so the next largest was from Van Eck, another asset manager. These guys are pretty well known right now and they kind of have been known for quite some time, particularly because of they've been doing a lot of um, promotion for their Bitcoin ETF um, and commercials. But these guys actually put out a few interesting predictions, more than most, 15 actually. I made a full video on these guys and their individual predictions. I mentioned two more important ones here today. First of all, that Bitcoin will hit a new all-time high by quarter four of 2024. Now, again, it's not quarter four of 2024. It was quarter one of this year when we hit the new all-time high. So again, this actually happened before the Bitcoin halving itself, showing signs of strength. Also leaning into the length hitting cycle theory as well. The length hitting cycle theory actually indicated that they would hit an all-time high well and truly before the Bitcoin halving. So again, a lot of these things play into the same thing though, right? Which is ultimately that we're going to have a pretty sizable bull run still to come. There will be something to come, even if that means earlier than later, but the lengthening cycle theory. The other thing they said as well was that the dominance of Ethereum layer twos post EIP 4844 will also grow as well. Now, 4844 has happened and we have seen that layer twos, modularity, data availability, a lot of these sort of narratives that fall under the layer two area are doing really well this bull run really well this bull run okay so that gives me an indication that they correct in saying that as ethereum's gotten cheaper and faster it's going to enable and i guess propagate so many different areas of crypto that we haven't seen pop off before do all this cycle so that gives me more confidence first of all in the overall market and also into layer two's modularity data availability all the rest of it. Now, another one here was from probably the third largest, Bitwise. Again, another asset manager, another ETF issuer for Bitcoin. These guys came out and said $80,000 Bitcoin price target by this year, new all-time high. Again, not quite at 80000 yet, but very, very close. Yes, $20,000 are off, 15000 or so off from right now. But again, we're building the confidence. The market is gaining momentum. It is gaining steam. And we are ready, preparing for the next move. Now, I don't care if we're moving sideways until September or October. I really couldn't care less. It means I can buy more crypto at lower prices. Again, that's not financial advice. You don't have to. You might deem that too risky. Okay, but in my personal situation, it is a great time for me to dollar cost average. What do they always say? What did Matt Damon say? <laughs> right, fortune favors the brave. The famous crypto.com, I believe it was, commercial. And lastly here, we have a crypto exchange, Bitfinex. 
these guys actually went a bit more specific regarding the market cap and said 3.2 trillion. Now, again, this aligns up to be about $80,000 of Bitcoin as well. So a lot of these asset managers and a lot of these uh, institutions, again, including this exchange, have predicted around 80,000 on Bitcoin this year. So like I just kind of alluded to, I don't care if we move sideways for the next six months for the rest of the year. I believe we're going to have a surge. Doesn't matter when, just as long as I'm personally exposed enough I'm willing to lose, by the way, in the market. Now, what I will quickly mention here as well, this video wasn't supposed to be designed to be long. Um, you know, I want you to drop a like right now if you made it this far because I want to do more vlogs. I'm sitting on the couch right now because it is getting quite late, but I do want to do more vlogs, being outside. And if you guys like this more candid approach to videos, you got to let me know. If I don't get the likes, I don't know that you guys like it. Okay, so thank you very much for doing that now. But I, an approach that I would really get you guys to think about here is using an initial investment level. That means a level in which you claw back all the money you put into each and every single one of your coins to pretty much mean that the rest of the money in the market that you have is all house money. It's all market money. You've put the hard yards in by buying quite cheaply, quite low, and the rest, the rest of the tokens you have in are, of course, extra tokens once you claw back the initial token amount to get back your investment. So some people like to opt for a 2 to 5x, usually is the sweet spot, I feel like, um, you know, above their initial investment level. So if you've pretty much bought HBAR or shouldn't say HBAR, let's say you bought near protocol of $1, that might mean you take back your initial investment already at $5, for example. Maybe because of the current market conditions, you make a few more X from here. The higher you sell your initial investment, the more tokens you'll have left over on the top side, which means you'll just make more money. Okay, but that's the last thing I want to mention as well. It's a good segue. And that is the fact that I think a lot of people are just trying to make too much money this cycle. Take it from someone who saw their portfolio basically it was around a seven or eight x in the last cycle and keep in mind for me back then being a 20 year old i think i was a 20 year old having about 150 grand in my account that would have completely changed the paradigm of everything that i, I was doing i might have not worked for a few years and focused on youtube or done something to better myself in my life but i was greedy i thought and there's no way there's no way i'm selling now the market's going to keep going these influencers are saying bitcoin to 100 grand Bitcoin's going to keep going. This old coin's made me a 5 or a 6 or a 7x. Why can't I make more, right? And so you, you just kind of push off the idea of selling. And unless you actually have a clear mind and do this right now, do it when the market's down, do it when there's nothing happening. You start thinking with a more clear mind. The minute you try to make exit levels a, a thing when the market's kicking off, it's not your logical brain thinking, it's greed. It's that little lizard in the back of our minds, that sort of ancestral thing that fight or flight saying oh hang on a sec there's a lot of money coming out here it's life-changing i'm making 10 grand a day on paper not real okay and then what happens the market pff, makes a shift even if it is a temporary correction even if it is a correction like we're seeing now it'll be odds fall down 30 40 percent in a single day or, or a week what are you going to do put yourself in that position the market hitting up it's just moved a lot we're at levels maybe six seven eight trillion global market cap and you're going to panic. You're going to see the market evaporate two trillion very quickly, and you're going to want to sell. All right, and then the market might go up more, and then you might buy high prices, and then it might actually crash, and then we might actually have the bear market. And, and this is a perpetual cycle people face. You know, it's not the fact that they're doing anything wrong. It's not the fact that crypto is a market where no one can make money. The complete opposite. Everyone pretty much makes money in crypto on paper. No one knows how to exit, and everyone, I mean everyone, has greed take over. The only people who almost don't have that problem is the asset managers, other VCs, because they already have targets in mind and they're happy with a 5 or a 10x. And I would argue, lastly, that just be happy with a 5 or a 10x. I'm telling you right now, guys, if you put 500 bucks in and make two and a half grand, 5x, that is not as bad as losing money. 98% of people do. And if that, with that two and a half grand, maybe in the next bear market, you decide to, hey, Maybe I'll throw in $1,000 and that $1,000 can be my new cost basis. Therefore, you're not only buying at cheaper prices, more convicted likely as well, but also you've doubled your investment amount. You've doubled the money you put in the market. So some food for thought, some food for thought, guys. Um, I'm personally selling when the market's liquid. That will come probably sooner than you sell because I'm not trying to time the top. I'm just trying to achieve my goals. The very clear goals in mind. And if you want help with those goals, if you want help knowing how to crush the market, Make the most money in the safest possible way. There is only one thing you can do. Well, two things. 
One is work a lot yourself, spend the hundreds of hours working this out yourself, or go down there, join the private community. Guys, I am telling you right now, even if you give it a go for one month, one month, okay, and you enjoy it, you'll know everything you need. That's, that's what I'm going to say right there, guys. You can use whatever you want at your disposal. All I want is for you to succeed in this ball run. That's literally it, okay? For me, I, again, like I've made a lot of the tools in that sheet. There are a lot of the tools publicly available on YouTube. I've made so much information free on YouTube here, all designed to help people make money because I know how it feels on the other end is to go through your first cycle, having all these assumptions, thinking it's going to be great. And it is for a little while until it comes straight down. All right, guys, take good care. I get all the best for 2025. Thank you. Bye-bye.